we spent time talking about while loops. So this word here, while, is a construction in C that allows you to repeat something as long as a condition holds, as long as a yes or no question comes back with the answer yes. And I've emphatically said in this course that we shouldn't need to learn new things unless our existing toolbox doesn't have something that works for us. But it's worth considering that in fact, there is more than one kind of loop that you can use in C. This is, I call this a while loop, using the word while. I think it's the most basic kind. There's a second kind that uh, you should know about because you could see it somewhere, but you actually don't have to use if you don't like it. You could get through pretty much the entire course only ever using while loops. But I should talk about that second kind of loop. And it's a style called a for loop. And the idea is that there's a certain thing that we often do, and we're actually doing it in this program, where we want to write a loop that does a sort of counting-like task. This program is actually counting, literally counting. One, two, three, four, five. I'm counting with the value n between a starting point and an end point. n equals one, I keep going while n is less than or equal to five, and at each step set n equals n plus one. And so in, in uh, English, I might actually say, for every value of n between one and five for every value of n. Uh, and there's a style of loop that maybe is more convenient, at least for some people, so it's a matter of personal preference. There's a style of loop that's more convenient for writing that kind of iteration, but it's your choice. Uh, and the key here is I like for loops because they make it easier for me to keep track of my three ingredients. What I often notice when I write loops in my own code, I write the starting condition, I write my continuation condition, and then I get so wrapped up in the loop body that I forget to write the incrementation at the end, because it's the last thing I do sometimes. Now, there's a couple of techniques you can use to avoid that problem. One of them is, whenever you write a while loop, um, start by putting the curly brackets, and then put your code inside the curly brackets. Don't just write the top curly bracket first and then go down to the bottom and, and write the closing curly bracket after the code. Put them both in before you do the code and then put the code in the middle. Uh, and then what I also recommend that you do is before you put any other code in the middle, put the incrementation down at the bottom. That way you don't forget it. And then put everything else in the loop body, put that in as you need. Um, the issue though is that it is still easy to forget them and it's also annoying to go find them. What if you had a hundred lines of print statements between the word while and the incrementation? They're all over the place. It's sort of nice to have them all in one place. That makes it easier to change your loop. And there is a style of loop, this for loop, that keeps them all together. Before I talk about for loops, I want to advertise the notes that you, I mean, you're probably looking at the notes page if you're watching this video. The notes talk about this too. You might notice if we're going to use lots of loops, we're going to find ourselves constantly writing n equals n plus 1. So I'm going to run this code just to make sure we remember what it does, not that you haven't seen this code enough already. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, whatever. And of course, I'm always welcome to write n equals n plus 2 to change my incrementation. I have to be careful to make sure my three ingredients still work together. But in this case, it goes 1, 3, and then 5. So 1 plus 2 is 3, so I get 3 squared is 9. 3 plus 2 is 5, so 5 squared is 25. But you might notice, I really like writing n equals n plus something if I'm going to write a lot of loops. And you might say to yourself, so programmers get lazy and say, oh, I don't want this is so much work. I don't want to have to write n equals n plus so many so much typing so many characters okay so c has your back if you want because this type of assignment statement is so common n equals n plus something you are allowed to use this shorthand and this shorthand is optional you need to know what it does because you could see it in code that i give you but you don't have to write it if you don't like it so the shorthand is instead of writing n equals n plus 1, you can write n plus equals 1. That's a shorthand assignment statement that it uh, adds a value to a variable and stores it back in that variable, plus equals. So we'll run that to prove my point. There it is. It still works. I could do n plus equals 2. And there it is. It gave the same result as before. It turns out there's also a minus equals, multiplied by equals, divide equals. There actually are a variety of these operators. As a shorthand, we call them syntactic sugar. They sweeten up the language, but don't actually add any real power to it. They're just a shorthand way of doing something you already want to do. Um, and they allow us to write, you know, n equals n plus 1, n equals n plus 2, without having to write n equals n plus, because I know you're getting tired of that, n equals n plus 1. 
And I'm sure there are some people out there that are still grumpy and saying, okay, I'm still, this is still too many characters, Bill. I can't type all this stuff. It's like six characters. This is 2020. People abbreviate things. C still has your back. You can write, if you just want to add one, because you might notice, okay, sometimes I want to write n equals n plus 2, sometimes I want to write n equals n plus 3, but seriously, Bill, I mostly just want to write n equals n plus 1. Most of my loops are going to be n equals n plus 1, and I don't want to have to write n equals n plus 1, and I don't want to have to write n plus equals 1. That's just too many characters. There has to be a better way. And there is, there's one more way of doing it. Because n equals n plus one is so common, there's even a shorthand that gets even, with even fewer characters. You can just write n plus plus. And n plus plus uh, increments the value of n by one and stores the result back into n. So we'll try that. And, and of course, that only works for adding one, not adding two or adding three. And there it is. And curiously, and this should be very unsettling to you. I'm, I hope you are unsettled by this. Curiously, you can write n plus plus, or you can write plus plus n. You can see that works. Now, what's, supposed, what's spooky about this isn't the notation. Sure, plus plus, that's a weird thing to write. It's the fact that there's two ways to do it. Why do they give you two different ways to do it if it's the same thing either way? And the answer is there's a tiny difference that we don't care about just yet. You won't be able to notice it yet. It'll show up uh, later in September and you won't be pleased. Uh, but you for now can write n plus plus or plus plus n if you want a shorthand. As I said, you, this is syntactic sugar. You're welcome to just write n equals n plus one. If you understand that better, use that. Don't try writing code because you think other people will like the way it looks. Write code that you understand and that you are comfortable with. But understand that you might see n plus 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 or n plus equals one in code that you're provided later in the semester. So you should at least know what it does. So I'll go back to this and I'll run this. Okay, so I'm back to my while loop problem. I've got these three ingredients that I need. And in this program, one of them's up here. And keep in mind, I could have put this all the way up here or you know, all the way there or something if I wanted to. The initialization could be quite a ways above the word while. Uh, and I could also put, um, Let's just get rid of that. I could also uh, put the incrementation all the way down at the bottom of the loop body, which could be quite a ways if you think about it, because I could have lots of stuff in the middle. It could be quite a ways from the word while as well. And then there's the continuation condition. Of course, that actually has to be stuck right next to the word while. So I think while loops are great. I use while loops a lot, but there's a second style of loop called a for loop that lets you stick all three ingredients on the same line, which does make it easier to keep track of all of them. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to actually call this, this is the while loop version. So you can see both in the same place. Uh, and now I'm going to write the for loop version. So the first thing I know is that my loop body should be the same. It should still say something squared is something else. And so I'll just put that there and then hold on to it for a minute. Now I will write a for loop. So I write the word for, and before I fill in the brackets, let's put the loop body in place. Okay, so there's the loop body, and as you can see, I use curly brackets just like before. We'll see in a later video that curly brackets actually define something called a scope, which is very important. It has to do with the lifespan of variables. And then inside the for statement, I put three ingredients. The very first thing is my initialization. Notice how there is a semicolon after it inside the round brackets. The second thing is my continuation condition. And the third thing is my incrementation. So notice how there aren't commas. People often make the mistake of using a comma here. They are semicolons. There are two semicolons and there are three pieces. The in initialization, continuation condition, and incrementation, all inside of one line at the beginning uh, in the for statement. And I'll call this uh, for loop version. I guess really it's a lowercase because it is uh, the statement in C is lowercase. Okay, there's the for loop version, and we'll try running this. So I've commented out the while loop version, and so we're just going to run the for loop version. And you can see it does the same thing. And I can even change the incrementation to be n equals n plus 2. We'll try that. And it's what we expect from before. And of course, I'm allowed to use a shorthand here. So I could say n plus equals 1. And remember, it has to be plus equals, not equals plus. The plus has to come before the equal sign to use this shorthand assignment operator. All right, I'm back to this. And of course, I could always use n plus plus. 
And for most people, probably most people in this course, in fact, by the time you get to midterm one, this will likely be the default style of loop that a lot of people work with. But it's absolutely fine if you only ever want to write while loops. So you're not marked down in this course for writing while loops instead of for loops. But keep in mind, you could see code on a midterm. I could show you code. I could ask you to comment on code that does have the for statement in it. So you need to know what that does. You don't necessarily have to write it. I strongly recommend to people that when you do your assignments, you which, use whichever one you're comfortable with. Write while if you like while loops, write for if you like for loops. It's worth it though to try both styles at first to figure out which one you like more. And it's also worth it once you've gotten your assignment to work and handed it in as a review exercise, see if you can go through some existing code like your assignment and change all of the for loops to while loops or the while loops to for loops. That helps you understand the equivalency between them because it turns out you could actually only ever write for loops in life or you could only ever write while loops. They're actually equivalent. There's nothing you can do with a while loop that you can't do with a for loop and vice versa. So it's just a matter of personal taste. But I recommend that you get used to both styles because there could be cases, like in my case, I often write both kinds of loops. I write while loops and for loops. There could be cases where one is better than the other. Even if you prefer one, sometimes you might want to use the other kind.